fire, 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 fire through this crowd, through this crowd. That's right. It gets worse. Watch this. <laughs> Do what? Why this sort of stuff is not troubling to more professed Christians, I really don't know. The Bible tells us clearly in his word that God is not mocked. And he says, whatever you sow, that shall you also reap. These people are going to reap a severe judgment because they are literally mocking God. Do we believe that there are demonic activities, demonic forces that come against people, including the people of God? Sure, but how it's handled is quite different according to the Bible than what we see here from these charlatans. You're gonna walk over here. Lift your hands. Do what? Her belly again. Lift your hands, it drop. When you see someone blowing on someone, waving their hand, or using little karate motions and so forth like that, that's clearly not scriptural at all. As a matter of fact, that's pretty much blasphemous. The Bible is clear. If you are a believer and you're going through something, if you're suffering, James tells us two things. One, he says to draw closer to him, resist the devil, and what will he do? The devil will flee. Why? Because inside you is the spirit of God. As you get closer to him, the devil has no desire to be closer to God, obviously. And when James also says, if anyone is actually suffering, look what he says. He says, if there's anyone suffering, then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. The point here is that he's not saying that you should cast a devil out. As a matter of fact, we don't see Paul. We don't see James. We don't see Peter. We don't see John. We don't see them giving instructions to the church that if anyone is afflicted in any sort of way to cast out a demon. As a matter of fact, we don't see anyone with a demon who is a believer in the church. We don't see any of this being cast out. We don't see it being promoted, being taught. We don't tell, we're not telling anyone to beware of people or Christians being demonically possessed or oppressed. As a matter of fact, Peter even tells us that Satan is walking around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But the remedy is to just pray, be sober minded, be on alert. Why? Because the fruit of the spirit, which we have, if we're Christian, the result of the spirit being in us should be self-control. <laughs> Jesus warns us of these evil men, of these wolves, of these false prophets coming. He says that beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. They look like actual sheep, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruit. Maybe it might, it might not be all the way evident as often or as easily as we'd like it to be, but don't worry if you watch enough, if you see enough, eventually it will come out. But the most important part of their fruit is just really their doctrine. God has not entrusted the word of God, his powers and so forth to people who do not understand or who twist his doctrine. Now he will, he will use some of these false prophets as a test for believers or so-called professed believers to see if they really are of God. But Jesus is clear. Sheep do not follow these wolves. John is clear in chapter 10 that if we hear a stranger's voice, we will run the other way. If you're listening to these people, it's probably because you're probably not one of Jesus' sheep. Many of these things are because people just want things. They're not satisfied with just the word of God, with the spirit of God. No, what they really want are things. They want an abundant life. And meaning by that is that they want to have well, they want to have riches. They want to have the creature comforts of the world. I've seen those before. These are um, 
these fell in our meeting. Look at these, these gemstones that are falling. These are, um, these are, what do you call them? Um, I've seen uh, it, but I can't remember the name. Yeah, I can't remember either. They're round. <laughs> They're round, uncut topaz. Yeah. That's what they are. They're, and I've seen these show up in Topeka. I've seen these show up in our meetings in, in Nashville. These are gemstones. I, can, I don't know if we can get a shot of these or not, but there's a bunch of these gemstones that are coming. Now, listen, I'm telling you, there's a, there's a dimension of the supernatural Listen, there's a dimension of the supernatural that's happening right now that you need to be aware of. I can promise you, God is not raining down gems from heaven. Tell us what happened to you last night, Barbara. Well, last night I was praying for healing for my knee. And when I got to the motel room, I forgot to look in my mouth because I was just going to look to see if there was a gold tooth in there. But this morning on the way to the meeting, I pulled the visor down and looked in the mirror and I said, Charles, there's a gold tooth in there. I can also promise you God is not giving people gold teeth in their mouth. The sad part is that people eat this up. The people are still listening to this and falling for this. Paul says, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander like newborn babies. Look what he says, long for the pure milk of the word so that it so by it, you may grow in respect to salvation if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. If you are a believer, you will desire the pure milk of the word. That is the most important thing. The Holy Spirit is the one who gave us it. And so if you want to have a true filling of the Holy Spirit, if you want to witness the Holy Spirit, if you want a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, read his word. But then when you hear people say ridiculous things such as they or in this case, his uncle disappeared, you've got people that will just clap and smile and yay and amen and eat it up. My uncle, Pastor Simon, was coming out of his car. This is in a few years ago. He's coming out of his car. They, they hired somebody because he was disrupting so much occultic work in the city of Nairobi. They sent people to kill him. My uncle stepped out of the car. They pointed guns at him. Rebe Shata Bahaya. He started noticing that the people were wondering where he went, but he's standing right there. He's like, why can't these people see me? He disappeared right in front of their faces. <laughs> him, he's seeing himself is there. But they are looking for him, wondering they dropped guns ren. And recently I saw a friend, Justin Peters, cover Bethel Church doing their baptisms. And listen to the response that this lady gives as for her reason to want to be baptized. And notice that the people at the church, they don't correct her. They don't care. Why? Because doctrine is not important. Friend, why don't you come over? Tell us your name and tell us why you're being baptized tonight. Hi, I'm Crystal. And <laughs> I just know that God is calling me to be a warrior for his animal kingdom and that I'm to lead angels of our, an army of angels to protect animals across the world. <laughs> And I just know I can't do it without God. Come on, give Crystal a round of applause. That's amazing, sweet. Do what? Crystal is getting baptized because she wants to be a warrior for the animal kingdom. She wants to lead an army of angels to protect the animals. And he said, that's awesome. That's great. They baptized her. You are not here to lead an army of angels to protect the animal kingdom. Rather, what we're supposed to do as believers is what Jesus says. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes the believing ones in me, the work that I do, he will also do. The work that he did, what is that? Paul tells us, as a matter of fact, Jesus says so as well. But we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. He was reconciling us to God. And now we have been given that exact same ministry. That's what we're supposed to do, and we're supposed to do so through the Word. It's a shame that we've got too many people who desire to see something, who desire to witness something, who desire to see a sign. But Jesus describes who those people are. He says they are wicked and adulterous. These people will have their reward. They will have their reward, and it will not be what they hope it to be. I pray that you all will be vigilant, that you will be diligent in searching the Scriptures, that you will be like those in Berea. Search the scriptures and find out if what's being said is so. If it does not line up with the word of God, guys, it's so clear. If it does not 
line up with the word of God, if it does not look like what we see in the scriptures, you are to, you are to reject it. Amen.